Coming up, I build a fully automatic Create Power General mob farm inside of a giant new hotel. And while it's taken literal days of my life to complete all of this, were the results worth it? Let's create mob farms. With the Create Enchantment Industry add-on, it is possible to super enchant books, which means it's possible to teach a blaze burner how to create books with even higher enchantments than you can get in vanilla. For instance, you can create unbreaking four books or efficiency six, and I wanna do that. But unfortunately, the road to doing that is quite difficult. We need liquid hyper experience, and to get liquid hyper experience, we need glow squid and lapis and liquid experience. And liquid experience is relatively easy to get. In fact, if we head over to my starter area of this world and go inside this building, over the course of this let's play, I've been collecting a bunch of it. I've also got a whole bunch of nuggets of experience in my backpack, which I use for mending my tools when they start running low, like my shovel and my pickaxe. And I can even store my personal experience by standing on this disenchanter and that all just gets taken away and put in there as well. And there are other ways to get experience too. For example, my spider spawner farm, which uses deployers with with swords on it to kill spiders and the skeletons in there as well generates me quite a lot of nuggets of XP and they all just come through into this storage box here and occasionally I gather them throw them into my backpack and just use them for like I said mending my tools but I've done spawner farms in fact that wasn't the only one I've done I also did this one here which is a skeleton spawner farm which generates me slime so I don't really want to go over old ground and I don't really want to convert either of those farms into a hyper experience farm because neither of those farms provide me any creepers and I'm always ridiculously short on gunpowder. So today I want to make a general purpose mob farm and as you can see I've extended our platform area over here and I've prepared a little area here where I'm going to be building it in the form of a hotel. But before we get on to hotels there's a couple of things I want to discuss from the last video. In the last video we made this petrol station which produces biodiesel from tomatoes grown behind there and I had a whole bunch of comments on how I can improve my tomato growth and you can see I've already set something up here. Tomatoes are from the farmer's delight mod and the farmer's delight mod also has rope and if you put rope above tomatoes you can see they'll actually grow up to three tall which is very handy that said my harvester will only harvest the bottom row and whilst i could make it bigger to do all three rows that'll kind of upset my bees and i like my bees being here and although i wouldn't have to remove the beehives every time the harvester came along all the bees would just get pushed over here and they'd probably just end up wandering off and i don't really want that to happen so to be honest with you i don't think i'm going to go with making all of these tomato vines even bigger and improving our output because even though my biodiesel tank is completely empty now. I've still got a whole bunch of ethanol here. We're still producing a ridiculous amount of plant oil. And if I go over to my liquid storage building, which is just over there, you can see I'm already pumping in a whole bunch of biodiesel in here. Sneaking into Cheaty Free Cam. We're already working on the third layer. So it's not going to take too long before this fills up and then I'll have an infinite supply. And why do I want biodiesel, you might be asking? Well, that brings me back to this super enchanting. You see, liquid experience is required to duplicate enchanted books. However, if you use use hyper experience then you can actually print books that are a higher level than you can get in vanilla as i said a few minutes ago so that's where i want to start a big old mob farm then i guess we're going to need a squid farm at some point so that we can get plenty of squid ink and then we should have enough biodiesel to create some crazy books so this hotel then Obviously, everything around here is not all that tall. And this hotel's probably not going to be all that tall either. So how am I going to make a really efficient, effective mob farm? I'm not. I'm going to make a reasonably effective mob farm, hopefully using as many of the create tools as possible to help me with that. And then hopefully, with the help of some crushing wheels, we'll be able to crush all the mobs down and get all of these nuggets of experience. That's my plan. But you'll need to spawn-proof the area and all of that sort of thing. Yep, I will. Underneath here, where I've extended the platform, I've put a whole bunch of torches down because while I was building that roof, this area was absolutely littered with mobs it was crazy so i know we're gonna get plenty but i will need to go around and light up a whole bunch of the caves under the area again sneaking into cheaty free cam there i am look if we hop down under the world you can see there's a whole bunch of cave networks around here that i'm gonna have to sort out but that shouldn't take too long one other thing i've done outside of the video is sort out this storage system you see these trucks are coming over from my store and send building over there bringing all of my items which are coming from all of the other areas in the world and bringing them into to our AE2 lab here. But the problem was they just weren't unloading their items fast enough. So I sped it right up. And I've done that by removing the container that they were coming into and just put an absolute ton of these import buses on the storage interfaces. And now the items come out of those lorries a whole bunch quicker. And all I'm going to do now is just tidy this up so it's not quite as horrendous. And because all of that's junk loaded, all of those items should have gone through there 
ages ago, but every time I come to the store and send to check how many items have gone through, all of the vaults were still full. But they're not anymore. They're nearly all empty. Which is very good news. Because I had a whole ton of items in here. And every single one of these vaults was full. And the train that drops all the items off was full. And the other farms at the other areas were full. But now all of these are pretty much empty. Which means everything's going to end up in that storage system a whole bunch faster. So now I've waffled on about all of that sort of stuff. I suppose it's probably time I start working on this hotel. I mean, I normally have a whole bunch of other stuff to do at the beginning of a video. But, uh... I think I'm just going to crack on today. So for those of you that don't know, mobs will spawn from 24 blocks up to 128 blocks away from a player. That means that where I'm going to be, which is probably where all the machines and crushing wheels are going to be, needs to be at least 24 blocks away from where the mobs will spawn. And that means if I'm doing this vertically, then if this was the ground floor, then the mobs are going to be all the way up there. And those yellow blocks indicate the different floors that would spawn on. Each floor is two blocks tall, allowing for most of the mobs, except Tendermen, I guess, because they're a little bit tall, to spawn between those gaps. Well, having that like that would mean this hotel's going to be incredibly tall. And I wasn't really planning on building a skyscraper. So instead, what I think I might do is actually build the ground floor of this hotel into the floor a little bit, but sort of disguise it, I guess. So let's say that we actually had the workings of our hotel down a few blocks. Then we could actually make the entranceway actually look like a hotel, but realistically it doesn't do anything at all. And then our mob spawning floors wouldn't need to be quite so high in the sky. The only downside to that is I'd have to do a whole bunch of digging in order to make sure that the area below me isn't going to start filling up with mobs as well. And the other thing, of course, that I'm going to need to be very careful of is, as usual, spiders. And I believe it is possible to prevent spider spawns by placing buttons on alternating blocks like that. But if we do that, that's also going to reduce the rates of the other mobs that can spawn there and it's also going to make it quite difficult for the contraption that I've got in mind to move the mobs about to get them where I want them. So this is going to be a bit of trial and error. I think once I've actually got the building in place and we see how the mobs are spawning then I'll have to approach how I'm actually going to deal with them and how I'm going to deal with spiders and whatnot. And I'm also slightly concerned that two block gaps between the layers is not going to be enough when it comes to taller mobs. So I've come over to my test world to find out. 128 blocks above the highest thing down there I've made a little platform which is 24 blocks long. I've then made all of these 16 by 16 floors with tinted glass at the top, and then I put a whole bunch of tinted glass above that just to make sure everything's nice and dark. But it looks nice and light on my screen because I've got that gamma mod that allows me to see in the dark just to make life a little bit easier. The bottom floor is three blocks high, the rest are two blocks high, and I want to see if anything's actually going to spawn here. So I guess we should turn mob spawning on. And there we go. We're getting things spawning on the bottom floor. And we're getting things spawning on the top floor. But are we going to get zombies and things on the top floor? Or are they only going to be on the bottom? Got a whole bunch of zombies on the bottom floor. But absolutely none of them on the top ones. So does that mean zombies are taller than two blocks? And looking at this, the answer appears to be no. I'm not sure why we didn't get any mobs on those platforms. Oh, now we have. I guess it's just random. So with two blocks tall, we're getting witches, skeletons, zombies and creepers. We are getting a few spiders as well. So yeah, we don't need to have the floors three blocks tall two blocks is absolutely fine but now i want to figure out this spider thing so to test this spider theory then i've added in another few floors this time they've all got buttons on and i want to see if any spiders are going to spawn on here at all and they are it doesn't seem to make any difference at all well that sucks are you supposed to stop spider spawning then mate is it just because that was near the edge nope they're spawning in regardless of the edge so buttons don't stop spiders from spawning well i guess that's going to stop me wasting my time putting a whole bunch of buttons down so back on the server then moving this pillar down about 15 blocks means our building doesn't need to be quite so tall but it does mean that i'm gonna have to do a whole bunch of digging down here to build a big old basement so i better get cracking the problem is i've got three minecart contraptions in my inventory and i have a absolutely no idea which one's which oh geez the, any of these could be the world eater i suppose there's only one way to find out let's come over here and hope that i don't destroy absolutely everything putting them down that is what is that i don't even know what that is and if i don't know what it is that means it can go oh that was this <laughs> i didn't even look around that's my ring for the middle oh geez oh well it's dead now i have to break that i totally forgot about this ring oopsie okay what's the next one Oh, that's my trailer for my car. Huh, okay, well, I don't really want to get rid of that. 
And this, there we go. That's the one I was looking for. I've got to be a little bit careful that it doesn't come all the way through here and start chewing all that up, but it has got a fair way to go before it gets there. So I'm going to let this travel through there and then do it down another layer. It reached where it's going, but it's not far down enough yet. We still got to go another five blocks. Let's do all of that again. Now I realize all of those torches I've just placed down are all going to go again, but that's fine. Well, it looks like we might have found some caves. It's almost at the end. In fact, I think that's probably far enough. I don't think I need a bigger basement than that, but we'll let it go all the way to the end here. And there we go. Jobs are good. So there we go. We've got a little basement inside of our basement. And it's a reasonable size, although I haven't used anywhere near the amount of space we've actually got, but I don't think I'm going to need all of this space. And that means it's now time to get back up to the top and start actually building this hotel. And I should probably sleep. Oh, you missed. You're rubbish. Quick, run away. And this is going to be the floor plan of my hotel, and it's pretty big. But it needs to be big, because otherwise, if it's tall and it's not that big, it's going to look really weird. So, yeah, it's going to be a big old building. It's going to be this shape. These two chunks here are going to be our mob spawning platforms once we get to these levels here. But rather than me just talking about it, let's do a montage. I started by creating an entrance area with quartz pillars and an overhang made of frame blocks with variations of granite for the roof. I then continued directly upwards, concentrating on the detail of the front of the building all the way up to the roof which I even threw a flag on top of. With the front facing skeleton in place I figured out the window design using mainly oak windows, continuing the design across the entire front section of the building and then moved on to the first corner structure mimicking the overall design and structure with a slightly modified window layout. However placing all of the frame blocks and detail was getting a little tedious, especially when working higher up so I grabbed a schematic and quill, made a copy of the front of the corner structure and then used the schematic cannon to clone it to the side. I then threw up a roofed area at the very top of the corner structure created another schematic of the entire corner structure and then used the schematic cannon again to clone that to the opposite side of the building. And then I made yet another schematic, this time of the entire front section of the building, and I used this to create a mirrored version at the back of the building, so it looked identical from the back. With all of that done, I filled in the side parts of the building and then continued up to the roof where I used more slope frame blocks with more granite variants, finishing off the main structure of the hotel. And there it is! Oh, no, wait, that's the picture I've been copying from. This is my version, and it's not bad. I quite like it. It's huge. It's taken forever. Even with the help of the schematic cannon, it's taken hours and hours and hours just to get this far, and it's not finished, and it's all very symmetrical because the front is exactly the same as the back, uh, although it's completely unfinished at the back. But that's fine because it's the inside that counts on this one and so far it hasn't got any insides at all. So we've still got a lot of work to do. But like I said, I'm very happy with it. It's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. It's come out huge compared to everything else. In fact, I think it's even bigger than my storage building, which might make it feel like it stands out a bit here. But by the time it's surrounded by a whole bunch of really big spruce trees, I think it'll fit right in and it'll feel like it's blending a lot more. And this area is supposed to be a little bit sort of patchwork and mishmash because it's just one of those areas anyway right that's enough of me talking about this building we'll finish the rest of it off later right now i want to get this mob farm in place or at least some mob spawning platforms so we can get some mob spawning in here and obviously they're not going to spawn very well with all of these windows and all of this light coming in so this little area here which is well basically where they're all going to be spawning is going to need some walls but before i put walls in i'm going to put the platforms in and then get the mechanism sorted to push the mobs off because well i don't really want mobs spawning in there while i'm working on it and it's gonna be relatively simple just a bunch of platforms and then just some sort of pushing machine to push everything across to one side or even maybe to the middle and then drop them all down a big hole into our basement below where they're gonna be crushed and then we'll get all that tasty xp and a whole bunch of mob drops it's gonna be wonderful peeps before we start on that though it's time for a quick biodiesel check and this thing is filling up quite a lot it might not look like it but if we cheaty free cam and go down underneath you can see we've got a whole bunch of layers of this now over four layers full that's going a lot quicker than i expected so that's good news right anyway mob farm i'm flying over towards this thing it's massive yeah we need it needs a lot of trees around it these trees these tall trees like this this is what i wanted around it but I don't think you can grow those from saplings, even in this biome. So I might have to take some schematics of those trees and see if we can get them planted over here because these trees are very small and I don't want to do the big two by two spruce trees because they're massive. 
but those here, the perfect size. So this mob spawning area is almost exactly two chunks in size. And that means we're only going to need to chunk load these two chunks and not this entire building. So back at my test world then. This is what I want to try and achieve. A sweeper that goes all the way around, gets to the edge of the platform, goes down and then goes underneath all of the platforms, comes back again, and then it will go back up again. And then it will repeat the process over and over and over again. So imagine I was a mob sat on here. I've got enough time to spawn and then I'm just going to get pushed off the end. And if I was a spider and I was clinging on here, I'm going to get pushed down as well. But I've got to do that with multiple levels in a not very big area. And back on the server, am I going to be able to squeeze all of that into this space here? The problem is if I'm going to have a sweeper that's going all the way across this level here, I need enough room underneath all of this to get the sweepers in and all of those different levels. So we might have to reduce the number of floors we've got here. So let's just see if we can actually work this out. If our sweeper was there, we'd have to bring it down pretty much all this way to then go up. And that's 15 blocks. Well, we've only got eight blocks here, so I haven't really planned this out very well, have I? Now, we could take the top layer up a couple of blocks. If we consider that this is the ceiling level, then we could actually make our very top floor at that level there, so there's still two blocks for them to spawn in between. And if we maybe take out a couple of these layers, so that it was something a little bit more like this, which still gives us five spawning layers, then it would almost fit. It would just need to come into this layer here. But this layer here doesn't actually have to exist at all. As much as I did want this to be like a nice big home, hotel reception i think it makes more sense to have all of the mechanics in here and just push this down into the floor because don't forget that our basement is all the way down here so we've got all this room to play with as well which means we could actually get away with having even more layers because the bottom layer can actually be down at this level and that still gives us enough room below 24 blocks for things to be able to spawn on it so i think what i'm going to do is get the layers in on this side of this system build up a gantry system and see if i can get that to work and oh, this could be interesting and there's a bunch of layers on that side of the building and I've put a little gantry system in so that we can see what's happening. There's a redstone contact at the top and the very bottom and each layer has got a whole bunch of iron plating just to sweep across the whole thing. And if I stand here and wind this crank, you can see the entire thing will go across the entire platform and I should be able to mirror that over this side eventually. But before I do that, I want to make sure it's actually all going to fit on this side first. But now how far do I need to bring this down to make sure that this one is underneath this layer when it comes back again? so that I can get my sticky piston in. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do some counting. I think it needs to go down 15. So I think I'm going to have to have the mechanical piston at that level there. Just wind that all the way up. Oh, and that does reach. Okay, that's good. But when I wind it down again, that's as far as it will come down before it hits anything. And I still need to go another three blocks. So I'm going to have to dig out a whole bunch of this floor. And with all of those channels dug, I should be able to bring that down far enough. Yep, that that is all the way underneath there. That's good. And then all of that's going to need digging out so the whole thing can come back across. So basically, I'm going to have to lose this entire floor section which is absolutely fine that's not a problem and with those gone and that move forward a bit that means i can squeeze the sequence gear shift in there it also means i can put one there as well and that's pretty much this entire thing kind of done apart from all of the redstone contacts and setting up the timings and all that sort of stuff and obviously bringing in power and then remove okay it's nowhere near dot g i've just discovered another big problem by taking out this floor here and giving a space below in our basement we don't actually have a big enough basement to do the same thing over here on this this side which means i'm going to need to move this basement wall significantly in this direction but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it for now i'm just concentrating on this side of the build and this zombie and this creeper and this creeper Ooh. And this hole, and apparently a spider. I should probably sleep, but it's nearly morning. Chew. So I've put some redstone links on the redstone contacts. I've put some sequence gear shifts on all of the bits that need sequence gear shifts. And hopefully that means that this thing, if it had power, would just about be ready to go. That said, I haven't actually set up these gear shifts yet, but I can do that now. And in order for this to not tear itself to shreds, I have to put a delay on each of these sequence gear shifts because if it goes too quickly, it just tears off the mechanical bearing and the entire thing falls to pieces. Now, I've no idea if they're set up in the right direction and they won't know that until we've got power. So when it gets to there, we need to activate this sequence gear shift to go across. So that's red. That's going to send it over to here and then it's going to get this one, which is green. And then that needs to signal to this piston to come down. So rotten flesh and green on there. Once it gets down here, it's going to be in 
into contact with that one, which means it then needs to send a signal to this to come back across. So that needs rotten flesh and blue. And then when it gets over to this one, which is yellow, it needs to go back up again, which means it needs to send another signal to this to go back up again. So that should be all of the sequence gear shifts set up correctly, assuming the power is actually going to rotate in the right direction. And speaking of power, well, we don't actually need a whole bunch of power to actually manage this gantry shaft. We are going to need a bunch of it for the crushing wheels, but that's a different story. What I want to make sure that I do is have the gantry on a separate power system to the rest of it like we did on this farm so that we don't end up with the harvester accidentally harvesting things that it shouldn't because it stops because the power runs out. So th things like this shouldn't happen, but it does a lot. It can't be full. No, there's none in here. You've done it again where you're not coming back fully. See, this is the problem with these gantries. They get confused very easily. So now this one's not coming all the way back, so it's not dropping its stuff off. So I think what I'm going to tell it to do is go a bit further and that should help. But it would have helped if it didn't just stop in the middle of the field. You're a moron! Jeez, there's a whole bunch of this field I need to replant again. And it's crazy, really, because this entire thing's chunk loaded, so it really shouldn't be having a big problem like this, but it is. But now at least it's all the way back. Now, this farm I need running all the time in order to get my biodiesel produced, which is why it's having problems, because every time I go out of the area, even though it's chunk loaded, it seems to forget what it's supposed to be doing. Whereas the mob farm's not going to be a problem, because this is only ever going to be active when I'm here. So this entire gantry system is going to have a lever on it so I can activate it when I'm here and deactivate it when I'm not. That way we shouldn't have this gantry just tear itself to shreds and get all sorts of confused. So power. For now we just need a water wheel to run this. And here we go. Our power is turning. That means all of these things are turning. Let's get this on a reasonable speed. Let's say 64 and let's have it going clockwise. And if I grab myself a button we can actually test this thing. We want to make sure that when I fire this button it's actually going to go that way. Like, oh it, it did. I didn't even press it. But there we go. And then when it gets to there. I was, oh, I've done that in the wrong place. Let's try with it in the right place. Rotten flesh and lime, and that should activate that piston, but it hasn't. Oh, I've got no power to the piston. That would explain things. And then that there, and then that should. There we go, it's coming down. And then is it going to go back across? It is. Oh, this is good. And then will it go up again when it gets here? It is. Oh, this is wonderful. It's actually working. I can't believe it's working. I didn't think I had any chance of this working. Not first time, at least. It wasn't first time. Well, it kind of was a bit. So now the tricky thing is actually having this on and off a book. I need to figure out how I can add some sort of lever on here to basically stop a redstone link sending a signal so that when it does get to a place, it will stop. Stop, but then I also need it to be restartable. So ideally, I need to be able to stop this from getting the signal here. Oh, I, I've got an idea. Good old fashioned sticky piston should sort that. Ah, should sort this out. I throw a sticky piston on there, put that into receive mode. Then for now, I can just put a redstone link on there with rotten flesh and magenta, put a lever above that. And if I flick that lever, that should, yeah, extend that sticky piston. That's good. But if I flick it off again, that should move that top chair. It hasn't moved the chain drive. Huh, I guess they're not movable. Well, that's annoying. In that case, how about a deployer with a wrench? Maybe that'll work to spin it round. It will. So I just need to give this enough power to twist that round and come back in again. That said, in my experience, sequence gear shifts and deployers are not always ideal because they often just get stuck halfway. But I think if I set that to 360, that should be okay. So now I stick a redstone link on there, but I kind of want to test it before we do anything. So let's just put a button on and see what happens. It goes in and it comes back out. Excellent. So that should stop the machine when it gets back should come back up and then just stop there here it goes it's coming back up to the top good yep it stopped so if i press that button again and spin that there we go it should start again which it hasn't oh geez that needs another redstone signal as well well that's fine we'll just do exactly the same thing on there then oh but well, that's going to give it a signal when we want to stop it oh and if i stop it while it's on that path there it's going to yeah get stuck and now it's not going to go again yeah so this isn't going to work either okay what about then instead of having this sequence gear shift on here at all we'll just put a clutch on there and then if i put that in receive mode and then go and turn this or i guess power it on it's not going to go anywhere that's just going to stay there now until i give that more power and then it's going to go again which means i don't actually need this redstone link up here at all anymore that saved myself a couple of blocks okay nice well let's turn it off for a bit then we don't need it running right now and that will just reset itself back to the beginning again and then i can build this entire thing all over again on this side hooray Hey!
And now the basement is a whole bunch bigger. And we've got both sets of equipment all in place now, and they should both go at the same time if I set them off at the same time. We've got exactly the same thing going on over here that's mirrored on that one. Without further ado, let me show you both of these things going at the same time. Here we go, go. And you can see they both sweep across like that and get to the end, and then they both go down. I don't know why there's a delay between them both. I think maybe one side's slightly shorter than the other potentially but then they both then go back across again oh this is wonderful and then once they get to that end they both go up again but i want to know why there's a delay i got a feeling that one of these sides is slightly longer than the other one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that's eleven blocks long and this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven this one this one's 12 blocks long so this actually needs extending one more block but i'm slightly worried about joining these two gantries together because I think that's going to cause us a problem. So I think we'll just have to leave it like this with them both slightly off size from each other and just see how we get on once we actually start getting mobs in this thing. And that said, we're not going to get any mobs in here at all with how light it is in here and without walls around these things. Well, that's the entire thing surrounded by tinted glass, but we've got a few gaps like down the back where mobs could potentially spawn and fall off, which isn't ideal. I kind of wanted that glass all the way up to this edge here because we don't want things falling down there. But if I have the glass there, then this can't come along the edge and that's going to cause us a problem. Oh, there we go. Proof that that's going to be a problem already. OK, that's all of the torches gone. And if I turn down my gamma mod back to 100%, it, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty dark in here, which is exactly why I use that gamma mod so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace all of this industrial iron here with more tinted glass because then things won't actually spawn on top of it. The other issue with these sweepers is they'll get anything that's on the bottom, such as zombies and baby zombies and skeletons and even spiders. But if out spiders are on the roof, if they're stuck up here, these sweepers are not going to get them. So I think I'm going to have to fix that as well. Go away. OK, that's all of the new sweepers in with the tinted glass. But in order to make them work, I'm going to have to do this. But if I do that, then the whole thing needs to go down an extra block in order to get underneath the bottom platform. And that's going to be a problem. The adjustments have now all been made, which means this thing can go a little bit lower. And it also means that each one of these little sections has two pushes on it. Oh, and there's a bunch of mobs up there already. So let's go get this thing to oh, wow, turned on and see what happens. Start push. Oh, geez. Hello. Start pushing. There we go. Oh, and then why have they stopped? Why did they stop there? Wait, ah, that's why. Extra block at the top. Yep. Let's just get rid of that one. There we go. Uh, and that one. There we go. Now we shouldn't have a problem. Let's try that again. Turn it on and they should finish. There we go. And now they're going down again. There it goes. Oh, this is wonderful. And then they're going to go back across. And if I stand down here, we should get maximum mobs spawning. And here they go. They're pushing again. Are we going to get a load of mobs falling off? Oh, we got a creeper. A couple of... Oh, wow. Wow, quite, yeah, quite a lot. Wow. OK, but I think you all have to agree that so far this is becoming a resounding success, which means it's time to concentrate on actually how we're going to kill the mobs. So I guess it's crushing time. Back in my creative test world, it's occurred to me that spiders are going to be a problem, and that's because their hitbox is bigger than one block, which means it's very difficult to try and get them into a set of crushing wheels, even with conveyors and fans and all that other thing. If I actually click one onto the crushing wheels, it will go in and go down. And even if I move these belts backwards slightly, you'd think there'd be enough room for them to get on there. Well, the fact is they can just walk about all over the top of these things with absolutely no problem at all. And it's going to be incredibly difficult to try and separate the spiders from all of the other mobs. So that basically leaves me with saws, which is absolutely fine. I don't mind using saws. Saws seem to work absolutely fine for the different types of mobs. But what you might notice as all of these mobs die on the saws is that we're not getting any of the nuggets of XP at all, which is why I wanted the crushing wheels. Now, I could always use deployers with swords again, like we did in the other spider farm that we've got. But unfortunately, creepers make them go bang. So that's not ideal. So what about sideways crushing wheels then? Will that work? No. 
Works for the creeper, kinda, but it's no good for the spiders. Now, according to a YouTube video I just watched, apparently placing trapdoors on your spawning platforms like this should stop spiders from spawning. Mob spawning on. We got in a whole bunch of skeletons. Got some zombies and some more skeletons. More zombies and some creepers. But it does feel a whole bunch slower, but so far we haven't had any spiders at all. Looks like this could be a way for us to go. However, this is also going to cause a massive problem because if we look at our little mini baby zombie friend. He's about the same height as a block, which means if our sweeper is at this level here and it's coming across, he's not going to get swept away. But I can't have the sweeper at this level here because the trapdoors are in the way. So I can't really push the mobs away unless I use just fans to blow them all, I guess. But I don't want to use fans. So just to prove this little concept, if I put a trapdoor on there, our little sweepy thing isn't going to be able to get past it. It's just going to stop. However, if I put redstone down instead, you'll see that it has absolutely no problem going over that redstone at all. But I don't know if that'll stop the spiners from spawning. So now I've got a whole bunch of platforms with redstone where the trapdoors were. Let's see if this works. No, no, it, do it doesn't work at all. Is the gantry bothered by carpet? It is. So that just leaves me with separating the spiders. And that's not as difficult as it might sound. Because while this system might work for all of the other mobs, the spiders are just going to get caught there. Which means all I'm going to need to get rid of those spiders is just a wall of mechanical saws here like this. And now the creepers should still end up down in the crushing wheels because they shouldn't reach those saw blades. And now the spiders should hopefully end up getting minced on those saws. They do. Who's shooting at me? So back on the server, this should be all we need, which is just a water trough going into the crushing wheels with a whole bunch of saws on that side. And I can't see any reason why that's not going to work, apart from the spiders inevitably crawling out, like that one did, and crawling up the sides. And I could maybe put something in place to stop that, but spiders will crawl up against fans and belts if they want to, so there really isn't a great way of stopping them. I suppose I could pour water down each side, or maybe even lava just to smite them. Alternatively, I could just put a ring of saws around the entire thing to stop anything that tried to go up the sides. That's not a bad idea. Gearbox, gearbox, and a gearbox. And that should be everything on that level wired for power, which means I can just extend that up there and that's them powered. So that's all of these powered. We don't have the crushing wheels powered, but that really shouldn't be too difficult. Something like that should work for those maybe, but I'm not gonna know if any of this works at all until I've actually got some power in here because this little water wheel is not gonna cut it. So I need some decent power down here. We can run lots and lots of crushing wheels off and lots and lots of saws off. Man, this thing's going to require a lot of power. So I guess now is a good time to check on our biodiesel situation and see if we've actually got plenty of it. However, I'm going to assume with the issues we had at our tomato farm that we probably haven't. And um, yeah, we're on to the fifth layer now, but, it, but it's, it, it's not going particularly quickly. But I guess there's always plenty of lava to be working with, so we can use that instead. So I need to get that lava from over here to all the way over at the hotel. Now I could just pump it underground, which would probably be the sensible thing to do. Or we could have a little side entrance here with another little truck coming along. In fact, we could even probably utilize the truck that's going over to our storage system and just have it come and deliver some lava over here. That seems like a good idea to me. That's looking okay. He hasn't gone into the field. That's good. Can he get around the corner? He can. Is it going to connect? He did. Oh, he's still a block too far back, but it, it's kind of connected. A few minutes later, and I've got another water wheel in here and a little... Oh, it's already filling up. The tray truck must be here. Another few minutes later, I've got water wheels and a lava tank. And hopefully, if we go to the top then, we should be able to see our little truck actually in the correct position. Yep, unloading a whole bunch of lava into there. So everything's working nicely. And that means I can now build a little power plant. So for the power station, I'm going to keep this nice and simple. We're just going to have that pipe system there with these blaze burners on top. And these are all going to have straws so that they can attach to the pipes and suck in the lava. And we just need a level four steam engine. I think that'll be plenty. And there we go, a nice level four boiler. So with two more steam engines stuck on the front like that, and a bunch of shaft down there like that, linking those all together, all, we've got all the power we need. Okay, let's get the power over to our crushing wheels first. Chain drive across the middle like that, and then a gearbox there. There we go, but we just need them spinning in the opposite direction. And that we can do with this speed controller over here. So if we just flip that round and have that going full speed, there we go, things are already getting chewed up in there. 
those. Excellent. But we're full of spiders. So let's get rid of those guys who are all conveniently on those saws. You're in for a bad time, little spiders. So all I gotta do is flip that one round and stick one of those in there and we should be saying goodbye to our spider. No, we're overstressed. Really? We're overstressed on this much power? All right, then. Let's go to 128 instead. <laughs> now all the spiders are dead, but I missed it. So everything's going. Everything's plumbed in. The mobs are coming in. The spiders are dying. And is the zombie going to get crushed? He is. What about the creeper? Get crushed, creeper. There he goes. And I haven't even turned the machine on yet. And that's because I need a collection system, which really shouldn't be all too difficult. There we go. We've got a big old vault there now. I do realize everything's floating in the air. Don't worry about that. We'll sort that later. And if we stick a funnel on there, all of the items are going to go into that. So that is now this entire build complete mechanically, which means we can turn it back on again and see how it all goes. Now I've got no real way to get down ah, to get down to this system yet, so we're going to have to be careful about that. And we've got a lot of mobs in there. I, I, wouldn't, it, it came, I don't know why that came flying over there, but that's fine. But are we going to get any mobs this time? So, well, there we go. Wow, that was a lot. Jeez. And a whole bunch more. Wow, look at them all getting crushed. Oh, and so far we've got a whole seven nuggets of experience. Now, I did consider setting this up to actually drain off the nuggets of experience and create them into a liquid. But if I do that, then I've got to export more liquids around when we actually come to our super enchanting setup. And I just thought it's much easier to transfer them as an item for now. So I guess I need to AFK roughly in the middle of this whole thing. Probably in a safe little box, just in case anything does escape. So a little while later in here, and I got fire. I decided it wasn't laggy enough in this room and I could really do with some more of it. So I added a whole bunch of fire. But don't worry, peeps, we've got no fire spread on this server because I don't like things burning down. This is to try and stop spiders. I've also added a whole bunch more tinted glass on all the sides to try and prevent any little bits that the spiders can get through. There are still a few hang up places where they could potentially get to, but there's not a lot I can do about that because of the mechanisms. So my idea here is that if they do get pushed down onto all of this, they'll uh, they'll crawl out onto the fire and get burned. Although it's not quite as quick as I'd hoped, but well, that's probably because because I haven't gone round and done any cave lighting yet. I've gone spotty! This is actually a creative copy of my world, believe it or not, and what I've done is I've taken a copy of my world, downloaded it, and added in the Vanilla Tweak Spawn Spheres data pack, so I can see exactly what area around this hotel that I need to light up. And inside, as we go closer towards this, it becomes an even bigger mess, but these red blocks basically say where the mobs won't spawn within the area if I was AFK down there, and they come just underneath our platforms which is absolutely perfect within the orange ones however are the areas that mobs will actually spawn and whilst being above ground isn't too much of a problem if we go underground for a second you can see just how massive this area is it encompasses all of these caves down here almost all the way down to the deep dark down here and it goes all the way over in this direction and basically it goes for absolute miles and i guess in survival i could go around locate all of those caves and put torches down and deal with it that way. But this is create. And with create comes great responsibility. Or, as I like to say, massive amounts of wanton destruction. That's right. I think the only way to realistically sort this perimeter out is with a big old machine. And back on the server, I've given it a bit of a start, putting a few torches down around the area, but nowhere near enough. So I've got a whole lot of work to do. But before I go, back on the downloaded copy of this world, what if I AFK'd up here? Let's create another the spawn sphere from here and if we go down a little bit we should see that these red dots are just above the spawning platforms which they are so that's good and now the orange ones don't go down quite so far before they were all the way down here almost touching the deep dark and now they're all the way up here which means there aren't actually that many caves to sort out at all and there's even less of the land down here to deal with so maybe for now while i don't have a perimeter this might not be a bad spot however this spot up here would be even better. Let's add in another spawn sphere from this point here. And you can see most of the orange area is above the ground. Hardly any of it's below the ground at all. So maybe this would be the best spot. Let's find out on the server. I just need to go up to around about 270 in the sky. Around about this point here should do it. And now if we use our cheaty free cam, we should be able to see that this is just as effective. There are a lot of mobs. There are an awful lot. Oh my goodness. 
goodness. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely... Well, that, wow, okay. It's it's much more effective up there than down... Oh, my... There's, there's even more coming. This is ridiculously effective. Oh, my goodness. But the, the platforms are full again. Here they go. <laughs> so many mobs. So, yeah, I think I might AFK from here for now. That was ridiculous. If you're enjoying this video, then consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes a second and it really helps me out.